Cancer, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for early October 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here just so we could dip our toes into the energy and see what's happening for the lovely Cancerians. Hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going, my guides. Talk to me. What do we got for the Cancer Collective in early October? It's Libra season, beautiful time of the year. What energies, messages, insights can we pull for our good friends? And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card, then we'll get into the full reading itself. And then at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean into, which is always interesting. So let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Cancer in early October. See what the energies are for you, my good friends. What's happening? When can we show our dear friends here? There we go. Thank you. Oh, okay. We got a rare one here, my friends. We got the Femme Fatale showing up, which usually very tempting. Lots of good energy here, but there is like this little element of like, be cautious with this. I mean, I, I like the energy to me because it reminds me of the Queen of Wands. Very alluring. Now, before we fully dive into that, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the October subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. And also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo, into the reading. Let's talk more about this Femme Fatale. Whether this is representing an energy around you or something you're stepping into, this is a powerful one. And now, I don't often see this card, like I already mentioned. We see this woman, she's dressed in red. She's holding a rose. There's a red bird by her, and there's Venus fly traps underneath. So there's a lot of potent symbolism here. All of these things are very alluring, very beautiful. So for some of you, I mean, this could represent how you're feeling. Maybe you're having a boost in confidence. Maybe you're feeling good about yourself. That would be a good thing. But there's also this little level of temptation. Now, often, sometimes beautiful things do carry a sense of danger to it. That's why roses have thorns. These fly traps emit a sweet scent to pull insects in. So you see what I mean? There could be certain situations where you might be tempted, where a spirit could be telling you, like, hey, be a little cautious here, Cancer. Don't go full bore into something. Just walk carefully when the femme fatale is here. But again, beautiful, sexy, strong type of energy, but there's a hint of danger to it. So we're just going to put her down right there. She could chill by the crystals. Not going to touch that Venus flytrap. Let's get into tarot now. And yeah, I always say the first card here doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a little footnote. So let's get you three cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. Let's shuffle it up one time here for the Cancerians. And yeah, while we get this deck shuffled up and ready to go, let's talk about last week's reading. You had a positive one. Now, I do remember a lot of the Zodiac that were having some rough energies, and yours seemed much smoother than most. Your reading was titled Big Win Incoming. Now, I always say all wins come in different shapes and sizes. Sometimes it could be monetary. Sometimes it could be interpersonal relationships or family. You name it. But I did feel a good energy coming towards you, so I guess it all really depends on your situation. Keep your eyes open because the energy could bleed over for a couple weeks. But we're going to see what shows up for you this week. As you know, energy is very fluid. Never set in stone, so only take this how it hits for you. Because we could be seeing your vibe or someone that you're linked to. Let's get it going. Three cards for cancer, please. What's happening? Early October. Thank you. Okay. Ten of Pentacles, that's a good start. Now, I do believe I've seen this for a couple other signs this week. I think Taurus started with the Ten of Pentacles in position number one, which can be very good. Uh, it's a very sturdy, stable type of energy, but we're going to talk about it. I'm cautiously optimistic about it. Let's get a couple more quick. Wheel of Fortune. Okay. I mean, I mean that speaks for itself. Let's get another one, and I'll get much more in depth about these cards, but we got two heavy hitters here, Cancer. Let's get one more. What do we have for Cancer? Thank you. The world. Okay, big, strong karmic energy attached this week. So, I mean, that makes it very complex when we're seeing all these powerful karmic types of vibes. So I don't necessarily feel like these are terrible energies, though. Let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes. Then we'll get into that juicy, intuitive stuff. But at first look, first glance, these cards do have some similarities to them, especially here on the back end. The wheel and the world, they're very cyclical. They're both karmic. They could represent endings, beginnings, that cycle of life. Same here with the Ten of Pentacles. That could represent a completion. So there is a little note of certain cycles completing for some Cancerians with the Ten, the Wheel, and, and the world. Powerful. 
types of energies here as well. So there's a certain complexity to it. This could be separate situations. It could all be the same thing. But again, these all do lean towards the optimistic. Okay, even if even if things aren't look too, looking too hot right now, these do lean optimistic. So let's go through piece by piece and really start to build this out. Position number one, and I'm going to give you the good, the bad, the in between. We have the Ten of Pentacles, one of my favorite cards. Now, it can represent a focus on the material world. We're talking career family, home, living situation, anything of the material world. To me, this is a card that generally represents a nice influx, a lot of abundance, level up. So again, just like last week, we're seeing wins, we're seeing victories, very stable, okay? And it's that type of stability that most people strive for when this card is in the mix. When we get to the challenging aspect of this card, it can be a little heavy. Notice that these 10 pentacles, they are grounded. They are very heavy. So there could be certain situations where it's like, okay, that's kind of set in stone or that is what it is. There could be certain individuals that are set in their ways when this energy is here as well. But to me, it's expansion. That's another thing with the next card as well. So I do feel like for a lot of you, there could be certain situations that start popping off in a good way, especially when this card is here. But yeah, I mean, some of you might just be dealing with family things when this card is in the mix. It's, it has a lot of other people in it which has been a theme I've been seeing, especially for earth and water signs this week, is like there's a lot of people showing up in the vibe. Moving to the center, we have the Wheel of Fortune. Again, one of my favorite cards in the whole deck. It is Jupiter Energy. This is my four-leaf clover of the tarot deck. So I think of turns of good luck, twists of fate, positivity. And, and just like Jupiter, it's expansive. It grows. It's extremely lucky. It's an energy that watches over you. So this is really beautiful to me. It's like, okay, regardless of the situation, things should shake out or things should take a turn for you in the positive. Now, the challenge that comes along with the Wheel of Fortune, it is a very fast, rapid type of movement. It moves real quick. So it could be situations that escalate very quickly. It could be changes that happen very, very fast, unexpected, surprising type of energy, which makes sense with what I've been seeing for you in recent weeks. It is one of the bigger karmic cards, too, because this is the Wheel of life, the circle of life. So whether it's chapters in your life, especially with this world coming up next to it, there could be certain chapters of life where it's like, okay, on to the next chapter. We're going to close a chapter on that, open a chapter on the next one. This is very karmic in that sense. Now, sometimes karma could mean reaping what you sow, what you put forth out, put forth, you get back in return. But karma doesn't always have to be bad. Sometimes it could come in the form of rewards. So we'll have to see what's up with this. Now, moving to the very back end, I mean, either that or certain situations you're going through were, were meant to happen, okay, when we're talking about karmic situations or things, whether it's other people or situations in general, it's like, okay, well, might not be the happiest thing right now, but you had to go through it. We have the world. Now, it shares a lot of themes that we see with the wheel. When I see the world, it is the last of the major arcana in the tarot deck, so it ultimately represents the close of a chapter, an ending, similar to this Ten of Pentacles. That's why I'm saying, like, yeah, we do have cards of endings and chapters closing, but not necessarily in a bad way. Um, again, this is similar to the wheel, where the karmic wheel, the karmic cycle. So we might be dealing with endings. We might be dealing with change. It could be all of the above. Other things I think of with this card, it is angelic. It is something coming to a head when this card is here, like something coming to a culmination. And it could also represent the world today. So for some Cancerians out there, whether it's world events, whether it's politics, you might be feeling those energies or affected by world events when this card shows up. Not necessarily directly, but like feeling the energy because everyone knows water signs, especially Cancer, is highly intuitive of what's going on around them. So we're just going to put this down to the side now. I want to dive deeper on all of this Cancer. So let's do it. Let's jump in and clarify. Let's get a good shuffle here. What's going on for my Cancerians? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation. And I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that Ten of Pentacles. Oh, and yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Cancer, you drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. Okay, Ten of Pentacles time. Why is it here, please? Thank you. Okay. 
All right, so for some of you, this could represent a change of location. Uh, I mean, I know that's very niche type of energy, but we have the Eight of Cups clarifying this Ten of Pentacles. I feel like for a lot of you, change is the name of the game when it comes to this whole entire reading so far. Because the Eight of Cups, sometimes it could be said to be walking away from something. And when we have a card of like the home and the household of one's roots, for a lot of you, there could be an uprooting of some sort. So whether it is living situation, whether it is work situation, there is some sort of energy on the move here. That's like, I mean, we can't even argue against that when we have all this energy here on the back end. That's extremely karmic. Now, I don't always say this is walking away. To me, it's just action in general. So when I see it, this card is moving towards the Nine of Cups. It is moving towards some happiness. So when I see it underneath the Ten of Pentacles, if you're, you're not making a big change or a shakeup of some sort, to, the, to me, this is moving towards this Ten of Pentacles. So for a lot of you, I feel like this could be claimable energy. That like, listen, this energy is coming. You might have to meet it halfway. It might not fall into your lap. But if you put in proper work and proper effort, you could really make something happen. That's how it feels to me. Like you need to meet the universe halfway with something. So we're just going to keep moving. Again, I'm not going to overcomplicate it. It is what it is. I do have that niche message for some of you that it could be a change of location or living situation. But if that's not the case, meeting the universe halfway to achieve something. Let's see what's up with that wheel. We'll see what the wheel's in. So why is the wheel of fortune here? Answer, please. Thank you. Whoa. Okay. Hanged man in reverse. And I've been getting this card a lot. Um, and it could be a little bit volatile. Again, very sudden because the hanged man in the upright is usually planted, not moving, not much happening. So I do feel this for a lot of Cancerians. If things seem a little stagnant, if things have been feeling a little stale, to me, there's an energy bubbling underneath the surface. Okay. And I've been picking that up in personal readings. I've been doing for some Cancerians. I'm picking it up here again. This could be like a really powerful karmic shift or change that you're going through here. Like, even if it doesn't feel like it, that's the vibe it's giving me. Because it's like, oh, yeah, no, it doesn't seem like much is changing here. doesn't seem like much is happening with the energy. When we go from the wheel with the hanged man in reverse, it's like something that builds, 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 and then boom, just kicks into gear. So, again, what whether it's a situation you're dealing with, you might have just had to go through it for whatever reason, whether it is to learn a lesson or part of your maturation. Or, again, this, this breakthrough type of energy is coming in quick. This change, and it's powerful karmic energy, especially with this hanged man. Because in the upright, it's planning, it's watching, it's analyzing. In reverse, it's like, yep, not sitting back no more. Very powerful, shifting, changing energy here in the center. Let's see what the world has to say. Now, for some of you, this energy can feel a little jarring. Okay, with the power that I'm picking up here, like it's so powerful that this energy could seem like it's super fast moving, it's super jarring, but let's just see what's up with the, the world, see what happens. I mean, for some of you, there could be various things closing out as well, it's very possible, like closing the chapter on something, we'll see when we get to that world. So why is the world here for cancer, please? Why is the world here for my good friends? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we do have the two of wands in the upright underneath this world. So for some of you, if it isn't a chapter that has already closed, um, for a lot of you in your mind, it's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm waiting for it to happen. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel bad to me. That's another thing I want to say. This two of wands, similar to this hanged man, is watching its planning. And when I see it here with the world, it's like, okay, well, I, I know what I want the end goal to be. I know what I want to get from this. But again, I do feel for a good chunk of you, aside from all this change-based type of energy, all of these alignments can represent chapters closing. So whether it's one situation, whether it's multiple, for a lot of you, there is a strong, powerful metamorphosis happening, even if it doesn't seem like it on the surface. So like something's building up in a very big way when I see this two of wands under here. So again, I, I feel like I've explained it pretty thoroughly. Uh, it's shown up in every single one of these alignments. So again, if things seem stale, I wouldn't expect them to be for long because you're either going to be experiencing lots of changes and shifts or you might be playing in this chapter close. So let's go through and do a quick recap because they all have similar shades to them. 
but in different ways. And I don't necessarily feel like they're all bad. It's just intense. That's what it feels like. But if you kindly look in the box, position number one, we have the 10 of pentacles with the eight of cups in the upright. So for a small portion of you, maybe it is thinking about a change of location or living situation showing up here in the front. Aside from that, this could be meeting the universe halfway where it's like, okay, there's something I want to achieve. There's something I want in my life. I'll put forth effort on my end. The universe is going to meet me in the middle. So this can be a good outcome. Moving to the center, we have the Wheel of Fortune with the Hanged Man in reverse. Very sudden, fast moving change base type of energy. And it could also be representing a karmic situation you're dealing with where it, it was meant to help mold you or help meant to help change you in one way or another. Moving to the back end. Yeah, all chapters seem to be concluding. Not necessarily in a bad way. I don't want to get anyone nervous. But with the world and the two of wands, it's like, okay, I, I know what my what the end goal is. I'm okay with this. It's like giving me that kind of vibe. So please take a screenshot if you want to look into it further. Let's see what's in the shadows for you. So let's shuffle it up one time here for the Cancerians. There's something bubbling under the surface, my good friends. That's for sure. But let's see what's happening. Something's building up. And yes, I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. They could be a good thing too. So let's get your one. Oh, and yes, if you've made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel and I have much love for all my channel members. Okay, let's get this shadow card out here for you. What is in the shadows for cancer, please? Thank you. Okay. The sun. All right. This is nice because I feel like I saw this in the Taurus reading as well. So there's an interesting mixture of energy between the Taurus and the Cancer readings. There's some similarities. The sun is the most positive card in the deck. And that's what I've been saying. Like, yeah, there's certain chapters that could be closed and there's certain things that are building up. But the sun uh, casts light and it's universal energy. It's really nice. So when we see this in the shadows, it can represent understanding. So for some Cancerians out there, there could be certain situations where you see it for what it is. It is what it is. You have full clarity on it and you could be totally fine with it uh, in one way or another when the sun is here. But again, this is universal positive energy. So this could just be another hint from the universe when we have all this powerful energy within the main part of the spread that, yeah, the sun will come out and shine. Everything will be okay. Um, I love it. I really do feel like this is the best card we could get within the shadows because it's showing us everything we need to see. So for a lot of you, whatever situations you're dealing with, there could be nice clarity coming in for you. So Cancer, that's what I have for you this week, my beautiful friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details of the October subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can check out my digital calendar for the month of October at my website, mastermetaphysics.com. But for the October subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of one of my favorite decks, the Tarot of the Owls. So if you'd like to get your name in for that, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. Second, let me know down in the comments, hypothetically, if you had to get a tattoo of a tarot card, which one would you choose and why? You'll be entered to win, and at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love, and I'll see you again soon.